Section 4.2, Solving Linear Inequalities. By the end of this lesson, I can solve linear inequalities with one variable, explain why multiplying and dividing by a negative changes the direction of an inequality, graph the solution set of linear uh, equality, or rather linear inequality, um, on a number line and use both set and interval notation, solve double inequalities, and use a graph to swast, rather to solve an inequality. All right, so linear inequalities such as x plus seven is greater than five, or like negative three is less than or equal to two times x plus six, which is then less than or equal to 10, are considered linear since the degree is one, right? We see right here, uh, this is only raised to the exponent one, so therefore it is linear. So we call them linear inequalities, right? Um, solving linear uh, inequalities uh, is similar to solving equations except for one difference well here's the difference right is that when you have inequalities um, you know we can do the same thing with uh, inequalities as we can do with equations except for one thing so if we add a number let's check to see if the statement uh, proves correct right so let's add a number to this uh, let's add positive 5 to both sides, okay? So we take this and we say 2 plus 5 less than uh, 7 plus 5, all right? So 2 plus 5 gives us 7, and uh, uh, 7 plus 5 will give us 12. Okay, does that statement check out? Yes, it does. This is still true. Okay, so I don't need to do anything with the inequality sign if I'm just adding a number. Well, let's try subtracting a number. Let's go 2 minus 5, okay? Uh, 2 minus 5 here, and then 7 minus 5, okay? Well, 2 minus 5 will yield negative 3, um, and then we write uh, 7 minus 5 right there. That's equal to 2. So is negative 3 uh, less than 2? Yes, that checks out, so we say that is, in fact, true. Uh, no need to change the sign of the inequality there. Now, multiplying or dividing by a positive number, I'm just going to take 2, and I'm going to multiply by 3, okay? So positive number, two times three, seven times three. Uh, the left side would yield six, and the right side would yield 21. Is six less than 21? Absolutely it is. So this checks out, this is true. Okay, now we come to doing this the same thing, except with a negative number, right? So two times negative three, um, less than seven times negative three, all right? So this becomes negative six, less than uh, negative 21. Well, wait a minute. Is less than, is negative six less than negative 21? No, that is false, right? So in this case, when you multiply or divide by a negative number in order to preserve the accuracy of your inequality, so in order to maintain that it is mathematically true, we have to flip the inequality sign otherwise it is not true and that only happens when you multiply or divide by a negative number so that's our conclusion right here you just flip the direction of the inequality sign when you uh, multiply or divide by a negative number okay so let's go right into solving uh, an inequality here we have uh, 35 minus 2x is greater than 20 and we're looking at x element of all real numbers and graph the solution set on a number line, right? So we're gonna get some values for x that will work for this inequality. And then we wanna state that in both interval and set notation. Okay, so here we go. There are two ways to look at this. So we can start it like this. We can go 35 minus two x uh, is greater than 20. And then what I'll do is uh, I will add two x to both sides. So 35 minus two x. And then what we can do here is we can add 2x to both sides, okay, all right, and that will cancel, and we get uh, 35 is greater than 20 plus 2x, and now I, uh, in order to get, to, uh, start getting x by itself, I'll subtract 20 from both sides, and I'm not going to show that this time around, uh, I mean, you guys have been doing that since grade 9, so uh, I think you know the routine. So you subtract 20 from both sides, that'll cancel the 20 on the right hand side, um, and you end up with this, okay, which is then uh, 2x. Uh, that right there yields 15, uh, is less than, is, sorry, greater than 2x, and then you divide both sides by 2, right? Okay, that'll cancel over here, 
and we end up with 15 over 2 is greater than uh, x. Perfect. Okay. Alternatively, uh, we could have gone about this a different way. We could have just said, uh, okay, 35 minus 2x greater than 20, and then we'll subtract 35 from both sides. Okay, so then 20 minus 35, right? And then we end up with negative 2x greater than negative 15, and I need to divide both sides by negative 2. Uh, excuse me, I'm just going to redo that with uh, red. Divide both sides by negative 2, negative 2, and then recall that because I'm dividing by a negative number, I have to flip the inequality sign, and I end up with 15 less, or sorry, x less than 15 over 2. As you can see, that's the same thing over here. Uh, 15 over 2 is greater than x, 15 over 2 is greater than x. So either way you approach this, you end up with the same answer. Uh, the one, the approach on the right, just required you to remember to flip the inequality sign because we divided by a negative number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to state the solution set in uh, set notation and inter interval notation. I already know that this is for x element of real numbers, so then I would just say that x uh, is uh, basically less than 15 over 2. Okay, So that's my set notation right there. Again, I don't need to say x element of real numbers because that is stated in the question. And uh, for my interval notation, um, I have x is less than 15 over 2, so that means x is an element of the set from negative infinity to 15 over 2, and I use round brackets because it does not include 15 over 2, so I use the round brackets there. Uh, the last thing that it asked me to do is uh, solve this inequality, or rather graph the solution set using a number line. So I'm going to import a number line here and then uh, show you how I'm going to uh, graph this. So. Um, I'm just going to import that one second, please. Okay, so I've uh, included my number line there. I know that it's uh, 15 over 2, so that means 17 and a half, and it's less than uh, 17 and a half, right? So I've got to do an open circle because it does not include 17 and a half. So I'll do an open circle here, and then I'll shade in the rest of this right here because it goes all the way to negative infinity. All right, uh, not my best shading work, but. Um, you know, I think you guys get the idea. Let's move on to a double inequality here. Um, and this case is kind of fun because you basically have um, a whole bunch of stuff in the middle and then you have numbers on the outsides. Well, we can just treat this um, the same way we would treat it normally. Uh, we're just going to solve for both sides here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to rewrite this inequality right here. So negative 16. Uh, less than or equal to uh, 2 bracket x minus 3 minus uh, 6 x plus 5 which is less than 8 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand and simplify the inside portion here so 2x minus 6 minus 6x minus 30 less than 8 Okay, so that uh, I have effectively used the distributive property there to expand. Now I'm going to simplify here with my like terms. Well, I can see right here that um, you know 2x and negative 6x, these right here are my like terms. So I'm going to add those together uh, and I get negative 4x. And then negative 6 minus 30 is negative 36. All right, and that's less than uh, 8. Okay, I need to get... Um, uh, the x by itself here, right? And I've got a negative 36. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 36 to both sides, right? So I'm going to go negative 16 plus 36, right? And then less than or equal to negative 4x minus 36 plus 36, less than 8 and then you've got your plus 36 right here. Okay. So when we um, do this, we manage to cancel out the, uh, the 36, right? And over here on this side, you can see that we're left here with 20. And then in the middle, we're only left with negative 4x. And then on the right hand side, we're left with 44.
Okay, so the key thing here is to now look at trying to isolate for just x, right? So that means dividing everything by uh, negative 4. So I'm going to take everything here. I'm going to divide this by negative 4. I'm going to divide that by negative 4. And I'm going to divide this by negative 4. All right. So then what I end up with is on the left side right here, 20 divided by negative 4. Well, that's equal to negative 5. But recall that since I've divided by a negative number, I need to flip the inequality sign. Okay, so instead of being less than or equal to, it's now going to be greater than or equal to x. And then I flip this inequality sign as well right here, and I get negative 11. Okay, so now I have effectively solved uh, for my x value here. And um, yeah, so now I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to write my um, solution set and interval notation um, right here. And so if I use my, uh, so, uh, sorry, my set notation, then I'm going to make sure that I um, start from most negative to uh, least negative or most negative to positive. So negative uh, 11, less than x, less than or equal to negative 5, all right? And then if my set, no uh, that's my set notation right there. Interval notation is going to be x is an element of, and it's got to be, um, uh, greater than negative 11, right? But less than or equal to negative 5. So there I'm going to use my square bracket right there. Okay. So done with both the set and interval notation, I'm going to import a number line here and go ahead and graph the solution set. Okay, I've got my number line right here. Uh, as we can see, it doesn't really go to negative 11. So I'm just going to, um, you know, like just kind of insert a negative. Oop excuse me, insert a negative 11 right there. That's a negative 11, okay? And as I can see, it goes, uh, it does not include negative 11, um, and it goes to negative five inclusive, right? So it gets infinitely close to negative 11, but never achieves negative 11. And then I just shade that in, and there we go. That's my solution set as graphed on a uh, number line. As I move down, the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to use a graph to solve an inequality. So effectively, if I have um, f at x is equal to 3x minus 1 and g at x is equal to 8, use a graph to solve when f at x is less than g at x. So they want us to uh, solve this issue right here, or this problem, when f of x is less than, when that function is less than the other function. So they want us to solve when um, 3x minus 1 is less than uh, uh, 8, okay? Now, of course, we can do this algebraically, uh, and then we would just bring the 1 over. We would get 9, then we would divide both sides by 3, and so we would say that x would have to be less than 3. But we can also see this graphically, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these two functions um, on this graph on the right-hand side here, and you will see graphically... Uh, or visually when uh, f at x, when this line, 3x minus 1, is lower than the line um, g at x is equal to 8. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just graph that for you. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I'm back, you can see uh, that I um, graphed the two lines. So I graphed right here uh, this line, which is uh, 3x minus 1. So it has a y-intercept of negative 1. Uh, rise over run is 3. It's a uh, positive leading coefficient, so it's going to go from uh, third quadrant to first quadrant, right? Okay, and then this over here, g at x is equal to 8. Well, I know that's just to be a horizontal line uh, through the y value of 8. Okay, so the question is, for what values of x is this function right here, right, lower than this function right here? Well, I think you can see that um, at 3, they are the same. So what I'll do is I'll just highlight that in red for you. So at 3, they intersect. But for any value less than 3, the blue function, which is f at x, has a lower value than the green function, which is g at x. So my solution here is, therefore, for x less than 3, f at x 
is going to be less than g at x. So this is just another way of determining it, right? So again, you could have done that algebraically by manipulating this inequality that we see right here, and you'd get the same thing. But you can also see that doing this graphically yields the exact same result, okay? Homework is listed right here. Uh, thanks again for watching.